In this video, we'll talk about lighting for photogrammetry. So far, we talked about equipment and camera settings. So let's learn how to take control of our lighting. Photogrammetry requires uniform, even lighting. That isn't always possible to achieve. Even if you're counting on outdoor lighting, you could have a bright sun with no clouds, or it could even be raining. And even on a cloudy day, you will still get some shadows and light on your object, which can cause issues when flipping an object over. Taking control of your lighting can eliminate these issues. And when you're using controlled studio lighting, you won't just get better models, but also better, more even textures. There are many ways to achieve even lighting. The best way is probably to use a powerful ring flash. These flashes form a ring around your lens and ensure everything the camera sees is evenly lit. They're not as common as standard top mount flashes and cheaper models can have disadvantages, such as not being able to mount lens filters, which we'll talk about in the next part. Big, powerful ring flashes are also very expensive, but some of them are so strong you can even use them in daylight as they will overpower ambient light. Instead, what we can do is we make do with a combination of standard flash and some inexpensive continuous video lights. Standard top mount flashes are cheaper and easier to find and they still allow for lens filters. Simple video lights are also inexpensive and they make it easier to focus and set up your camera settings. In this case, we're using a mid-range Godox flash meant specifically for Sony. Some brands use different flash connectors, so make sure to choose the right one for your camera. For video lights, there are plenty of inexpensive choices. You shouldn't go too big, but you do want something that outputs a decent amount of light. It's also important to get at least two lights, as you want to light your object from two sides. An inexpensive LED light set with stands can make a good choice here. You could also skip the flash completely if you get three to four LED lights, allowing you to cover more angles. This depends on the complexity of your object. The more holes and crevices it has, the more lights at different angles you might need to fill these evenly. My ideal setup almost tries to mimic a ring light. The flash lights it from the top, and the continuous video lights light from the left and right, next to the lens, just out of view. I found the flash higher up helped light the hole in my little ceramic pot. When looking down on it from a higher angle, the video lights helped light the front part, which the flash couldn't reach. One more thing that can help achieve even lighting is adding diffusers to your lights. Diffusers can be paper, or plastic sheets, or caps that go over your lights. They spread the light out in a more even way, softening shadows. Most flash gun sets come with some kind of diffuser, and usually video lights have a diffusing sheet as well. If not, you can always use tracing paper, scissors, and sticky tape. It's not an exact science. Now is the time to repeat our previous video's most important point. You need to adjust your camera's exposure settings for the amount of lights available to get a properly lit photo. Just like exposure settings are balanced, you can balance your lights too. Low exposure might require more light, and light is generally easier to tweak than camera settings. It's also worth pointing out that a flash is a short, strong flash of light, while video lights emit less light, but they do it non-stop. A flash can be very precisely tweaked, but because your camera cannot see the flash's light until it fires, focusing and tweaking settings is a bit tricky. Your display will not show a 100% correct representation of the final photo, as the camera might be increasing the ISO or shutter time as a preview to mimic the exposure of the final photo. And because a flash fires for such a short time, it's also not affected much by shutter time. Even if your shutter is open for one second, the flash only fires for a few milliseconds. So if you're using a combination of flash lighting and continuous video light, you can tweak all settings to even lights out. Your flash will probably easily overpower the video lights, so you can tone its strength down. You can also increase the effect of your video lights by increasing shutter time, as they will keep adding light the longer a shutter is open. There's not one solution here. You'll have to experiment for your exact case and equipment. Keep in mind, the end goal is to simply have uniform, even lighting with a minimum of visible shadows. The automatic photogrammetry system will have an easier time aligning photos, and your textures will come out more even and uniform, like a true PBR base color texture. That said, some objects and materials don't play well with strong lighting. Reflective materials and even metals can be much trickier. 
We'll talk about that in the next part.